This week, I had the chance to go and visit Chuck Mackey at his rehab facility. I hope he won't mind that I talk about him. I usually try to ask people if I'm going to share about them, but I wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, a few weeks back, we celebrated Chuck and Barb's anniversary, and sitting with the two of them at his rehab facility, I was able to see an enduring love. 1 Corinthians 13, as it has this long list of attributes of love that we have become so familiar with that they, to some extent, become a laundry list for us, says that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. We've been preaching about love and saying love is and picking out a few of these attributes that are listed in 1 Corinthians 13 And today we're going to talk about love enduring. Love endures. It sticks it out. It makes me think of the marriage vows that, again, we maybe are not as familiar with if we've not gotten married, or many of us only get married once and we only say them once, so maybe we're not as familiar with them. I say them quite a bit. And you're probably familiar with them as well because you've been to many weddings or watched many on television. But as I think of enduring love, I think of the phrase that we say in our marriage vows, for better, for worse. As I watched Chuck and Barb after their many years of marriage, I thought of for better, for worse, sticking it out and enduring all things. Even after just 11 years of marriage, I hear those words and they mean something different to me than they did on the day that I said them to my wife. And for Chuck and Barb, after many more years of marriage, they mean something even different than I hear them as. We hear... Another kind of love enduring today in the story that we heard about Elijah and Elisha. These two, they give you trouble because they are together and they have nearly identical names. I want you to try the the J sound in Elijah, J and Elisha. Feel where your tongue is. Say J and Sh. It's nearly identical tongue placement. You really have to lean into that shh on Elisha in order to differentiate it from Elijah. I think there's a reason that their names may be so similar because this is a story of how Elisha takes over Elijah's ministry and in many ways becomes much like him and it's so evident that their names are nearly identical. But Elisha has an enduring love for Elijah. He repeatedly in this story, Elijah says to him, I am being told by God to go to this next place, but you should stay. And Elisha says, no, as long as you're alive and as long as I am alive, I am following you wherever you go. That's exactly what enduring love is. I am going with you. For better, for worse, I am going with you. Each year we pick a theme for our preaching, for my preaching, in our worship. And this year, we've been working through our vision statement, joyfully reaching out to share God's love and faith in Jesus with everyone. This year, we focused on the phrase, sharing God's love. And you've heard a lot about love in the last year. You may have felt like you had to endure another sermon on love. And I, of course, joke. But the reality is that love truly is about enduring. And this church is a community of believers who embody this idea of love enduring on a daily basis. It's easy and evident to see around you. There's a group of women that gather every Monday to make what we call ugly quilts. And they are there without fail unless they are in the hospital And even then, they've told me when I visit them that they wish they could be there. 
They are always there, working through good and bad, through lean and plenty, to make quilts for people in need. That is enduring love. We have another quilting ministry that we uh, that are our prayer quilts. They are literally there for people in moments when they need to know the enduring kind of love that is only available in Jesus Christ. We give them a physical representation of how God's love endures for us. And it is for us an act of that enduring love to show the love of God and of neighbor and how it is always there for people. So that even when their crisis has passed, they are able to wrap themselves in that quilt and be reminded of that enduring love. And you don't have to look to programs in this church necessarily. You can look to certain people and see this model of enduring love on a daily basis. Between the love of two people like Chuck and Barb that I mentioned. I also didn't ask this person if I could talk about him, but he's a pretty evident love endurer. His name's Bob Fletcher. And he experienced this church as a church that endures in love as this community surrounded his wife, Cheryl, as she endured sickness. And eventually she passed away. And now, as part of that experience of enduring love, he shows that same kind of enduring love. And so I heard, as I visited Chuck this week, how Bob has come and sat with him And he was only supposed to be there for a few hours, but Bob said, I'm not leaving, just like Elisha. And he sat there far longer than he was supposed to. Bob's not the only endurer. Diane Yoakum does the same kinds of things for people, sits with them and has an enduring love for animals, which puts her straight after John Wesley's heart, who really believed in a time when animals were not treated fairly that they should be. He was an oddball in his time, let me tell you. We, of course, these days really do seem to love our animals, but he was a novelty. Enduring love makes me think of Wilma Eddy. As I watched her at the bedside of her husband. For better, for worse, love endures. Enduring love goes beyond the end of life even. I know that her love for John endures. And Elisha, too doesn't let the fact that Elijah is gone stop him from his enduring love. He takes up the mantle and he keeps going on in Elijah's ministry, doing it with his hands now that Elijah's gone. And there are so many others. They do it unannounced. You know, Wilma's a good uh, example. John was declining. Many of us knew that, but weren't aware of the extent of it because she quietly endured and cared for him in her love. Gary McDaniel goes and sits with his mom every single day in the nursing home. And enduring love also changes over time. And I watched last week as Joel Norgard was here with his granddaughter Kendall, That's enduring love to hold your grandchild because you've raised up your own child. They now have their own children. It's an enduring kind of love that you have to commit to over years to see the fruition of it. And I know that there are those of you out there that know the joy of holding a new grandchild. And enduring love does involve years of care and raising them. I thought of this as I visited the Martins' home last week to celebrate Maria's graduation. She's walking away from me. (laughs) 
That's all right. But it takes time, right? And you endure through the good and the bad to raise up a child in love. We're a church that endures in paying the debt on the building that we built in 2006. It feels like it goes on and on. We see the end in sight now. We have our final note and we know that it will be over. But we could have given up at any time. I joked when I first got here that I frequently drove by on uh, Atlas Road, the old Baptist church over there, that red brick building. After five years, it's in much worse shape than it was when I first got here five years ago, but it's still for sale. And I said, you know, people often said, oh, our building is so big, and I don't know if we need such a big building. I said, well, we could just sell this building and move over to that smaller church over there, but we have endured because we believe in the ministry that's going on here, and our building gets used because we have love that endures. We find creative ways to move forward in the midst of difficult times, starting online worship in the midst of COVID because our love endures. Our love for Jesus and our love for God endures for better, for worse. All you have to do is refuse to stay behind. That's what Elisha does. Elijah keeps saying, just stay here. This is my journey. And Elisha says, no, I'm going with you. And we, as people of enduring love, commit to going with the Spirit wherever it goes, not choosing to stay behind, but saying, as long as you're alive and the Spirit is alive and well, people, as long as you're alive and I'm alive, I'm going with you. And of course, as I said, that enduring kind of love goes on even when others get left behind. Enduring love always moves forward, for better or for worse. It doesn't give up, and it doesn't part ways. And it's really very difficult, as Carrie said. She said, you would think it would be easy. But it can be hard to stick it out. I worry sometimes that We're not very good at sticking it out as our church prepares to fracture and move in separate ways, as our country continues to seem so divided. How is it that we move forward together and not give up on one another? Because that seems to be our preference. If I don't agree with you, I'll just walk away. I've watched more relationships broken up over social media this week, again, as we talk about divisive issues. And I know that there is a need to stand for truth. But how do we do that in love that endures with one another in the midst of our differences? I don't know, necessarily. I sometimes am flummoxed by this I do know this, that God called me to be a leader in the church and in this world at this time, and so I'm trying to figure it out. I think, by looking at this story, that as I said, it's about refusing to stay behind, but insisting to move forward together. And it's also not simply about Elisha's love, and this is why I told you it gets confusing. It's also about Elijah's enduring love. Part of it is that we have to pass the mantle on. That's what Elijah has to do here. He knows that he's going to be taken up. Elisha knows that he's going to be taken up. He has to be able to pass on that mantle of enduring love. And Elisha wants it. He says, give me a double portion of your spirit and just so you know, we hear this, uh, and you have to understand um, the Hebrew inheritance laws to really understand this, because what it sounds like is, so Elijah is this mighty prophet. In fact, we see this in this story because he takes his mantle and he strikes the water and the water's part. That is meant to make us think of Moses, who, using his staff, in, through the power of God, is able to part the waters to save the people of Israel. 
we're meant to understand that Elijah has an equal power to Moses in this moment. And that's a pretty bold statement for a Jew to say because Moses is really considered as one of those high point pinnacle people. So it makes a direct relationship and says Elijah is like Moses. That's a very big statement. Remember, Moses is the one who carries the Ten Commandments down the mountain and guides the people through the wilderness. He is the epitome of good leadership. And here's Elijah. He's like Moses. Elisha says, I want a double portion. And what we hear is, I want twice as much spirit as you have, which seems like a bold ask, right? And that's not what he's asking. In inheritance law, the firstborn child always got double what the other kids did. So if you had six kids and you were going to divide your portion out into six, they would get two sixths and you would take those other four sixths and divide it among the five remaining children. That's what Elisha is asking for. I want the inheritance of a firstborn, which is still asking for you know, more than just the normal inheritance but he's not asking for double the power that Elijah has. He's just asking for the firstborn's portion. But regardless, Elijah has to be willing to give it. And here's what he says to Elisha. If you just stay focused, then you will receive what you've asked for. And I think that that's the secret for us. We not only need to be willing to move forward together, refuse to stay behind, but we need to stay focused on what truly matters. That's how we endure in love. It's how relationships last for years and years. It's how churches go on through lots of years. Do you realize how long this church has been here? One of the saddest things for me is that in the midst of my time here, uh, but because of the craziness of our world life, we missed a chance to celebrate our 175th uh, anniversary, or whatever we would call it, of being a church. We've been here as a faith community for over 175 years. There are only a handful of you that are even that old. We have endured together, and we can endure together, and we model that enduring kind of love personally in our lives and as a church on a daily basis. And now we've come to the end of a year. You don't understand, or you don't think of it as an end of a year, but for me it always is. This is the last Sunday of June, and July, the first Sunday of July is always a new year for United Methodists. If you were getting a new pastor that is when they would start. You're not. <laughs> yeah. But it's also, it's also why I'm preaching on enduring, because you have to, you're going to have to endure me for another year. And we're also handing off the mantle of our theme. So I told you that we, we always have a theme for the year. We have focused on sharing God's love, and we're going to move on to the next phrase uh, of our vision statement. So remember, joyfully reaching out to share God's love and faith in Jesus with everyone. So we're going to focus this next year on sharing faith in Jesus. We move forward, there are endings and beginnings, and at times it can feel like for better, for worse. But when we endure, we move forward together. And we've been enduring And we are still here, and the Spirit is still here, and we are a people of love and endurance who can bear together through the hard times and through the divisiveness around us in our culture and in our own church. Why? Because we refuse to stay behind, but we commit to moving forward together. 
and we stay focused. That's why we've been preaching over our vision statement, to help us stay focused on joyfully reaching out to share God's love and faith in Jesus with everyone. We've been breaking it down because it's easier to swallow things in small bits, but we have been staying focused on our vision Love must endure. And love does endure in this place. We will continue to live out that love here and in the world around us, amongst those in our family and amongst our friends and amongst the strangers of the Goodrich community and across the state and across the world as we move forward together and stay focused on God's love and faith in Jesus. It endures through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.